Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing well. Today, I thought I'd share some of the tips and tricks I've learned over the years in the car trade that can help you with the DVLA. Hopefully help get you out of a stressful situation, help save you some money and save you some time. These are all things that I've learned from other traders or from having to figure it out myself, but I haven't really ever found anywhere that kind of lists these things out. I mean, some of them are gonna be relevant to you, some of them aren't. They're gonna be helpful for the public as well as the trade, but I am gonna kind of aim this at the trade and maybe I'll explain a few things, just in case you know you don't understand the processes of how things work. But I'm just gonna work my way through some of the things that I think are most useful, advice that I give people all the time, and they say, what can I do with this situation, members of staff or other trader friends that I know, how do I do this, how can I get around this? And these are my top tips. So I've got an example V5 document here. This one happens to be for the Jeep Cherokee that I bought in to do our off-road challenge. If you haven't seen that video, Toby will put that up here. So at the top, this is the new style of V5. You've got your registration, you've got your document reference number. This section here is where you can see how many keepers the car has previously had. This one's had five previous keepers. Um, it's also got a note there, declared new at first registration. They'll all say that. Sometimes these days on modern cars, if they're being categorized, whether they've got an insurance marker against them, that will be there. So that can be handy to know. Always worth checking the V5 first because it might tell you straight away without having to do a history check that the car has got some damage against it. Here's all our information about the vehicle, what type of vehicle it is, um, what kind of tax class it is, the weight, the towing weight. Really useful information if a customer wants to know how much is the towing weight. So this vehicle here, three and a half ton brake, 750 kilograms uh, unbraked. That's pretty much everything. Can, you're not allowed to tow a trailer over 750 kilos. It doesn't have brake. Um, so there is useful information there. If you're looking, then the vehicle age is there, the date it was first registered. Got change of vehicle details. So if you want to change the color, you put a different engine in it, things like that, you can send that off. Selling or transferring a vehicle to a new keeper. This is something that a lot of us would have been used to seeing. This is the green section. You would fill out the new keeper's details on there. And as the seller, you would send that off in the post to the DVLA. It's a bit old hat now. Everything's done online. And we will get into that in a minute. Then you've got change of name or address. This is worth keeping an eye on, remembering this for later in the video. But again, you can do this all online. So this is a bit of an archaic document, really. Some people are just so attached to it, though. That have, that this is what you should do, you should post this, you should do that, I should keep this bit, you shouldn't keep that. Well, we're gonna go through that because all of it can be done online now, so there is no stress whatsoever. Uh, one that we get a lot is, this is your yellow section, which is selling it to the motor trade. So if you go and part exchange your vehicle at a dealership, in the old days, you would have to rip out that yellow section, you would fill it out or get the garage to fill it out with the garage's details on it and post it off to the DVLA. So the DVLA knows that it's been put into the trade and is no longer in your ownership. So if someone at that dealership goes off and you know goes speeding, you're not gonna get their speeding fines. So that would be that, what you do normally. But again, now you can do that online. It used to be that just the customer who is disposing of the car to the dealer could do that online. But now the DVLA, in a very sensible move, have allowed the dealer to do it on your behalf so that it's all done and dusted when you're sat there kind of handing over and you don't have to worry about it because quite frankly, customers can't always be trusted to get that posted off or to go online at home. Understandably, once they're at home, excited that they've got their new car. There is a section for exporting this vehicle uh, if it's gonna be for over 12 months. So if you were sending your super high mileage, let's say Nissan Patrol off to Uganda, you'd need to fill that out and let the DVLA know that that car's not gonna be in the UK anymore. And then most importantly is the new keeper slip. So this is gonna be kind of your proof of ownership. This is something you do take away with you. Regardless of everything being done online now, you still want to get that new keeper slip. Ideally, there might be some scenarios where you can't, but ideally you as the customer should be taking that away. There is an opportunity to fill the date out on there, but you may as well, but it's not that relevant. As long as you've got your sales receipt, that's kind of your proof that you've bought that vehicle. This is your interim document until your new V5 arrives, once the uh, dealer has sent that off, or the person whoever's selling you the car sends that off, this is your kind of document which will help you tax the car. This is the, this is the piece that you use to tax the car as a new keeper as well. So that is the V5. So let's get into some of the tips and tricks. Now, if you are a trader, it is important to put the vehicle into the trade. You can go onto the DVLA website, 
it will ask you, are you a trader? And if you are a trader, even if you're a trader at home and you're just buying the odd car every now and then, you've bought it from someone in the public, ideally you do want to be putting it into trade. If you transfer that vehicle into trade, it is gonna stop the previous person's tax, so they're not gonna have any issues with that. It's gonna be taken out of their name, so they're no longer gonna get any of the kind of speeding offenses or anything that may come up with it. The DVLA aren't gonna chase you for lack of insurance and lack of tax, because they're gonna say, well, it's in the trade, so a trader is dealing with it. If you transfer it into your own name and buy it as a regular person, you're gonna add an owner to the vehicle, the DVLA will be straight on with sending out automated messages saying your vehicle needs to be taxed. If you haven't insured it specifically and perhaps you're running on trade insurance, you can get fined. And I've had it before that I'll get fined for the vehicle not being insured. Because if it's in your name, even if it's off the road, there's this new rule thing where it has to be insured if you haven't declared it sawn, etc., like that. So that's another thing. You will have to then declare it sawn if it's registered in your name, if you're gonna park it off the road. So if you can, it's much easier to put it into trade and save yourself a lot of headaches. If you do that and then you trade on the car, you need to keep a paper trail of who you've passed it on to because you don't register it into trade again if you sell it to another trader. If a trader then comes along and buys that car from you, they'll say, thank you very much, they'll give you the 500 quid and you would give them the whole V5. As the trader, you keep hold of the, the V5. So you need to know who it is that's taking it. Ideally, you wanna take a photocopy of a driving license or a picture, make a note of the date. Ideally, if you're doing things right, you'll have a kind of sales invoice, which will have that information on anyway. Because then, if they go off and get speeding fines or whatever, as the person who took it into the trade, the letters are gonna to come to you first. Now, if that does happen, don't panic. All you need to do is kind of go online and you just pass it along the line basically and you say, I sold it to this person on this date, at this time, and you send that back to the police or the insurer or whoever, and then they have that information then and then they go on to chase it. But it is important that you keep those details and rather than just taking a business name off someone, make sure you get a copy of their ID that matches the person that's in front of you because otherwise you could get stuck having to pay speeding fines and things like that. If you are going to get in the game of doing distance selling of cars, then not only do you need to let the customer know that they have a 14 day kind of cooling off period, should they decide that the car's not for them, it can come back to you. You need to be aware of that as well. And my tip would be that if you are doing that and that customer is gonna have that 14 day kind of comeback period, don't send off, don't register the V5 until that period has passed. If you do, you will register it into their name, and then they come back to you, uh, you know, two weeks later, let's say 13 days later, um, a week after they've had their new V5 document and say, I would like to return this vehicle to you. You have to take it back, but now the vehicle's got an extra owner on it, and that's always gonna show on the logbook and any history report, which might affect the value, and it might put some people off, especially if someone's just taken ownership of it. So that would be my advice. I mean, a lot of people would do this Regardless, all the time, we used to do it. We used to hang on to them and just do them at the end of every week, transferring the V5s so that should something come back, especially when you're dealing in cheaper cars, it can be quite pertinent to do that because the customer might say, oh, I just realized that it's this and it's that and uh, I just want to return it. And if you're going to return it, then yeah, you don't want to add an owner on and then wait for the V5 to come back again. Now, before we get into the rest of these tips and tricks, I have got another tip for you if you are a car dealer. If you're looking for good quality stock, you're struggling, you're struggling to find the right stuff with the right descriptions and the right location, then you need to check out today's video sponsor, which is CarWow. You've probably heard of CarWow with Matt Watson and all the drag races they do. They've got almost 9 million subscribers on YouTube and they make some really fun videos. But what you might not have known is that they run daily car dealer only auctions for cars in your local area and nationwide. These are for dealers only, so you're not competing against the public trying to buy this stuff. They need to be pre-qualified. There's a link in the description so you can get signed up. And then you get access to hundreds of cars that are listed daily. You can check them out based on all the pictures they've got. There's loads of information. You get a HBI report for free as well. And on top of that, unlike conventional auctions, you can go and check this car out before you hand over the money. If you're having it delivered, you can still check the car over before you agree to pay for it. If it's not what you're expecting, 
you are not obliged to pay. And that's such a massive difference for car dealers. The last thing we want is to buy a car on good faith and it turn out to be not what we are expecting. So that is the absolute beauty of using the CarWow dealer auctions. Check everything over, make sure you're happy with it. Make sure you know you can make a profit before you hand over your money. And you've got absolutely tons of options to look through as well. So if you are a car dealer and you are looking to buy stock, that is my number one tip of the day. Check out CarWow dealer auctions. The next one to keep an eye on is the V5 issue date. So if we look at our V5 again, it will tell us up here the date that the customer has acquired that vehicle on. So this one was acquired, it says the 2nd of November, 2021. So if someone is trying to sell you a car and they're saying, oh, I've had it for two years and whatever, another thing you need to check, you can look at that and say, okay, so they've had it since 2021, that's fine. But if you go to the inside page, this row of, um, numbers here, look across to the right. So on the right hand side, there's a six digit code. This one's 031121. So that is the issue date. That's when this V5 was issued. So it all ties up with what they're saying in this case, that it was uh, acquired it on the second and the V5 was issued on the third. Perfect, probably they filled it out online the day after. What will happen sometimes you need to keep an eye on is that it will say that it was done in 2021. If you look at the issue date, it was just last week. And you think, well, you've had the car for two years. Why have you only just done that? Don't get me wrong. Sometimes there are genuinely innocent reasons for that. If they've lost the V5, then they might have needed to get another one. But in that case, you need to see in this section here where it says about the owners, it should say duplicate document. Now, why is that important to keep an eye on? Well, if someone has just got this in the trade and maybe they've just realized that it's got problems with it and they want to try and sell it to you or part exchange it to you, just to get out of it and get into another car, they might backdate the V5. So if they hadn't transferred it into their names already, what they can do is use that new keeper slip, use the details, put it in and say, input that I bought this two years ago. And the DVLA, so long as that wasn't before a previous registration, will say, okay, we'll accept that and you're just registering it late. So it will come through on the front of the document and it will look like they've had it for two years, but in reality, they haven't. So that is one you need to look out for. Next one's an important one, and it is to do with the V5C number, the document reference number. Now, on occasions, people won't have the V5, or perhaps they've just got the new keeper slip, or perhaps they haven't got the new keeper slip, they ripped it off for some strange reason and lost it. Or what happens quite often is that people don't know what they're doing with the V5 document, and they end up with the wrong pieces. Now, an important piece of information to remember is that, say you've only got the V5, document here with your V5 document reference number and you haven't got the new keeper slip, which is all important because if you're trying to sell a car, that is what the new person needs to tax it with. You can't tax it with the document's reference number unless it's in your name. So if you're buying a car, you need the V5 C2, which is the new keeper slip to do that. But what happens if you don't have that? Well, you can go to the post office and you can explain, you can fill out a V62 form, or just simply remember that the V5C2, the new keeper slip, is just one digit difference from the document reference number itself. So in this example, it's 1307. And our new keeper slip is 41307. The point to remember is the numbers are exactly the same except for that first digit. And conveniently, it doesn't matter what digit you put in. So if you've got the documents reference number and you wanna tax that vehicle, but you don't have the full new keeper slip number, just add a number in front. It doesn't matter what number it is, zero, one, nine, it does not matter. It will allow you to tax it. And that has got me out of a lot of sticky situations where you've got a customer who wants to come pick up a car and it turns out you don't have the V5 C2 new keeper supplement slip, uh, but you do have the document. So you can get everything done perfect but they need to tax it with a new keeper slip. Just add a digit in front. The next piece of advice I've got is when it comes to retaining a number plate from a car. So say a car comes into you with a private registration on it and you wanna take it off for one of two reasons. Either you want that registration to sell it perhaps or keep it yourself, 
or because you just think the car would look better with its original number plate. This is something that I do a lot. The only issue with retaining a number plate from a car that you've bought into stock is that you would have put it into trade and the retention document for the registration that you want to keep will get sent to the address that is on the V5. So that'll mean the old owner. So if you have this car transferred into trade, you want to keep the number plate and you fill out the form, it's going to go to the old owner. So they're going to be the beneficiary of your £80 retention fee. There's two options here. Well, it depends on how much you've given forethought on this. If you've taken it into trade already and then you decide I want to take that registration off, there really is no other way around than registering it to yourself personally, adding an owner to the vehicle, and then you can pay your retention fee once it arrives and take it off. If you are having a car part exchange to you and you know that you're going to take that number plate off because you think it looks better or you want to keep the number plate, there is one trick to get around this. When you go to fill out this document, rather than transferring it into the trade, rather than transferring it into your own name, do a address change. So you can change the address. Uh, say the customer is Mr. Joe Bloggs of 1 Downing Street, then you can just change the address to your address at your work residence, your home residence, whatever, and you will then get a new V5 issued for free in the customer's name, but in your address. That means then that if you go online and you retain that registration, it's going to come to your address. It will be in the customer's name, but that doesn't matter. That's not important. What's important is it's going to come to you. And then once it has and you've got the new V5 with the original registration on, you can then transfer it to trade. This is something that takes a bit of thought thought, and sometimes you might need to explain it to the customer that that is what you're going to do. A lot of customers don't care about their private registration, especially if they're getting a shiny new car. But that is the only way really of getting around it without adding an owner to the vehicle. What about taxing a car if you haven't got a V5 document altogether, the person has completely lost it? What you're going to need to do is fill out a V62 form, which is basically an application for a new logbook. Uh, you'll fill that out. You need to know the VIN number, the registration, the new keeper details. It will ask you for the old keeper details, but if you don't know, for example, you've got it through the trade, just leave it off and it's not going to be an issue. You can take that into the post office and it does depend on the circumstances. Sometimes it will depend whether it's previously in the trade or whether it's not in the trade. I think it needs to have to not be in the trade. Now, I could be wrong. This is a caveat. I don't remember exactly. Our local post office isn't always the most helpful when it comes to this. But nine times out of 10, the computer will say, yes, that's fine. We'll take your payment for your tax. We'll send off your VC2 document, which they're going to need a check or a postal order for £25 for. And you can tax the car immediately that way. If that's not working, it says because it's in the trade and it won't work, just head onto Facebook and look for vehicle tax people. There are people out there who for a fee, normally about 50 quid, can tax a car for you. They've probably got some kind of backdoor access to the post office system. It's not an ideal situation, but when you're stuck and a customer's desperate for a car, things like that, it can be helpful. My next tip is for direct debit on taxing a car. Say you haven't got your trade plates or you have and someone else in the business is using them, you need to drive a car, it's not taxed. Well, you can use the new Keeper supplement and tax a car online using a direct debit type setup where it's gonna take a payment from you every month. The good news about this is, well, this probably is a bit naughty and I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just saying there is a loophole here that works. You can tax a vehicle using your direct debit information. It will activate the tax immediately, but it won't actually take a payment from you until the next month. It will tell you exactly when you look at it what date that payment's gonna come out. So. If you need to run a car around for a few days for whatever reason, you can tax it that way and you'll be instantly covered. But if you cancel your direct debit approval before that date, they can't take the money. Now, don't get me wrong. If you do this enough times, the DVLA will just block your card. Trust me, I've got a couple of blocked cards. But it is a very handy thing to know. If you're, for example, on holiday somewhere and someone offers you a car and it happens to be right where you are and you haven't bought your trade plates, you don't really want to tax the car properly or transfer it into your name. That's, that's a cheeky little get around to get you home legally. Now, the last one on my list is if you have an issue where you are trying to retain an unplate from a car, 
that you've taken in the part exchange. Say you've done the address change, it's come to you and you're trying to retain it, but you're getting a message on the screen on the DVLA website that says, this registration cannot be retained online. You need to do it via post and whatever, which is obviously not ideal because it takes forever to retain an number plate this way. And you wanna be turning that stock really quickly and getting it sold. The only advice I can give you is that tends to be the case when the vehicle hasn't been taxed recently. Use the uh, direct debit tax system I've just explained to you. Tax the vehicle, leave it a couple of days usually, leave it over a weekend, come back and try it again. And nine times out of 10, I guarantee it will allow you to then retain that number plate and then you can just cancel your direct debit. It doesn't happen all that often, but when it does, someone part exchanges a car and you can't do it, it can really slow things up. And I've had it before where customers have decided they're gonna part exchange their old car, but it's been off the road, sawned but they wanna keep their registration before they hand it to you and they wanna get this done in advance, it might not let you do it online. If you have to wait six weeks to do it by the post, it's really gonna slow things up and probably kill the deal. Just tax it. Tax it for a few days and I guarantee it will allow you to then do it, you know, sometime between a few days and a week. It's taken me in the past. It's not always a guarantee how long it's gonna take, but that is definitely a good option to try. So there we have it. They're all of my top tips for DVLA tax, things along those lines that I can think of. Um, I'm sure there are others and I'm sure other traders and members of the public alike will chime in and give us some other kind of options and tips and tricks. Leave them in the comments below. I'd really appreciate it. I'd love to find out these kind of tips and tricks that help me out day to day. And I'm sure everyone else who's looking for this video, if they're looking for a solution for something, you can put it down below people will be very grateful, as will I. So I hope you found this interesting, informative. You can remember it for when you do need it. If not, make sure you can find the video when you come back again. Uh, if you've found it useful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. If you want any of my merchandise, you can head to shiftingmetal.co.uk. If you need any vehicle transport, head to barrymotors.co.uk forward slash transport. And if you are a dealer and you're looking for good quality stock, don't forget to check out the Car Wow dealer auctions. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.